Hi. Now we have a topic for biomolecular principles for biomedical engineering. So today we want to study uh, molecular principles in biomedical engineering. So we understand the basic structures of proteins, which are polymers of amino acids, and how the diversity of this amino acid structure influences the protein's 3D structure, the dimension, and the, its function. And the goal for this is to lead you to uh, introduce the nucleic acid as a polymer of polypeptides and how this structure is different in DNA and RNA polymers. And this leads to the importance of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA in storing our genetic information in our cell. And we will briefly review genetics 101 and that leads to the central dogma of molecular biology and the concepts of bio biological transcription and translation. So this will lead us to think about the importance of gene cloning and how recombinant DNA technology has revolutionized biology and medicine. So first, let's talk about why DNA is important in human health. So we have heard a lot about DNA Probably a lot of you already know what DNA is. And in fact, thinking about human health issue, many diseases result from failures at the DNA molecular level. So for example, there could be a defect in the gene, which is uh, in DNA, that uh, gene itself may have a defect which causes genetic disease. However, I would say, these are relatively rare. And on the other hand, there could be defect in the regulatory regions of the genes, which produces eventually functional protein, and that function could be uh, problematic. For example, regulatory gene uh, uh, regions can affect the gene which may be related to proliferation, cell proliferation, and and suppression of tumor uh, formation, which can cause cancer. So this will be very important because cancer is almost top uh, cause of death in the developed countries. And examples of a single gene defect. What if a single gene can have a defect which can cause a problem? So for example, cystic fibrosis is a single gene defect uh, a disease which currently we don't have any um, treatment. However, this is a severe that uh, this causes a problem in lung epithelium and uh, patients uh, can suffer uh, until, so the patients will not live long enough. Um, so that's a problem. Currently we are developing treatment for this genetic defect disease. And another example is muscular dystrophy. This is about uh, genetic disease uh, causing the muscle weakness. Uh, eventually, it's uh, problematic. And another example is Huntington's disease, which is also caused by a genetic defect. The problem of this genetic defect is we, uh, the cells affected, all of these cells have a defect, so we cannot produce a functional uh, protein properly so that it affect the patient and it's not very easy problem to solve and another way is how to cure uh, fix this genetic defect which requires the gene therapy which has been progressed a lot uh, recently and also there's a lot of engineering issues for example let's say we have a, a virus containing to fix these genes but throughout our long epithelium, how do we deliver it? And how can these genes uh, fix to deliver to each of the cells inside the lung in case of cystic fibrosis? So this has been a challenge and uh, our engineering and scientific approaches will be very important. Let's start talking about a building blocks of proteins first. So what are proteins? 
protein is a macromolecule of consisting one or more chains of a uh, long chain of amino acid residues. So proteins are the most abundant um, molecules, I would say, in our composing our body. So proteins are made up of polypeptide chains. So this polypeptide is a polymer of amino acid. Let's see how amino acid structure look like. So amino acid has a, a first central carbon atom and carbon has this four uh, bonding unit and one side is a hydrogen. Uh, this side is a NH3 plus which is amine part and the other COO minus this is carboxylic part. And what's determining uh, the name or the structure of this amino acid is this residue group, this R group. So at the unionized form of amino acid looks like this. So CH and NH2 and COOH and there's an, a residue. So this unit of amino acid can polymerize to connect to one by one by one. And that we call as a polymer of amino acids as a polypeptide chain. So this polypeptide should have this amine and carboxylic acid and side group. As you can see, the other, uh, this hydrogen and amine and carboxylic acids are common. So what determines its unique structure, unique function is this side group R. So that R1, R2, R3, these are amino acids, different kind, and we can polymerize this uh, and we can name it R3, R2, R1, R3. So this R is the determining factor characteristic and that we call as a polypeptide. So polypeptides are polymers of amino acids. There are about 20 kinds of standard mm, uh, natural amino acids with varying side groups. The properties of these side chains or residues determine the eventually the three-dimensional structure of the polypeptide. Proteins are made up of one or more polypeptide chains. While its sequence is kind of linear, but in reality, inside, in our body, it actually has a three-dimensional structure. So let's uh, discuss a little more about these amino acid groups. So the, the property of this R group side chain determines the property of amino acid. So we can regroup them into nonpolar and polar and acidic and basic. So nonpolar, the characteristic is hydrophobic. Hydro means water, phobic means dislike. So I put one water molecule here, which is H2O. Uh, this water molecule, in fact, from its electronic aspect, hydrogen has a partial positive. Partial, we put this Greek letter delta, which doesn't mean it's actual charge, but it's more of a partial, uh, partial polarity. So it's more like partially positive, positive while the oxygen molecule uh, atom side is partially negative. So this we call as a, a polar and in physical point, we can draw something like a polar uh, dipole moment we can assign. So this water already has a polarity. So water likes to interact with a polar residue or polar molecule. So that's why uh, polar molecules will be liked by water. So while it's non-charged, so there's a, uh, this a number of amino acid groups. And one good example is here. This is a threonine amino acid, like CH, CH3. You see this OH. So this O oxygen has a polarity, so which would like to interact with water. While the other nonpolar molecule, such as leucine, an example, this is all carbon and hydrogen, and these are not polar, so 
water would not like to uh, interact with this. So this is hydrophobic. So this part of residue inside the water, they may hide inside the structure rather than coming out to directly interact with the water molecule. The other aspect is now the actual charged molecule. So for example, aspartate, uh, one example of amino acid has a C8C4O minus. This is actually negatively charged. So aspartate or glutamate, and these are negatively charged, and this will be an acidic group. On the other hand, like this lysine molecule, you see this uh, positively charged NH3 plus, and this will be a basic group. So many proteins which are uh, composed of amino acid chains or polypeptides are serving as an enzyme catalyzing chemical reactions. Some other proteins are supporting in and outside of the cell. So this is structural uh, support. So what else proteins can do in our body? Can you think of? Yes, antibodies are all proteins. So proteins are the most important functional unit of our body. And this is a, a kind of nano structure, nano machines in our body. So to give you an idea more detail, I put here amino acid more uh, details, so detailed group, so that you know what amino acids are. So amino acids with electrically charged side chain, an example is positively charged. So these are the side chains. And this is an arginine, and we write it ARG for biochemists, even to save the space and time, they put as a R. So each amino acid has a full name and three letter uh, short name and even one letter name. So another example of negative, <clears throat> for example, aspartic acid, we write it ASP or in one letter in D. Honestly, I'm not a biochemist. I don't remember this, but there, you know, biochemists use this single letter to represent one single amino acid. Another example is a polar uncharged side chains in serine, threonine, asparagine, and glutamine. And you can see this OH, OH, and this provides a polarity, negative charge. <clears throat> and special cases are here cysteine, glycine, proline, <clears throat> and hydrophobic side chains, alanine, ALA, A, valine, isolution, lucine, methionine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan. And these are ones you study into biochemistry or more deeper, and you will face it a lot of time. So this is in a nutshell, a single amino acid will have a structure like central carbon and here an hydrogen molecule, and one side is amine NH2, the other carboxylic uh, COOH. And what determines its name is actually the residue over here, side chain. And this one amino acid and the other amino acid, you can see this uh, carboxylic side COOH, this OH and H from this amine, and this H2O will come out as a water molecule, and the rest can be connected. The CO, you can see CO, and this NH, CO, NH, and they become a polypeptide, this peptide bonding. So this is peptide bonding, and it keeps making a change of amino acid. So now I want to discuss about the essential functional unit of living organism, which is called protein. <clears throat> then how the protein serve their function, and that secret lies in the structure of the protein. So we have studied protein structure for many decades, and we figured out how they actually is composed of, how they look like, and, and how they serve. So for that, here comes a, a simplified version of, you see, we studied amino acid can be as a three letter. So this 
ASN, glycine, phenylalanine, glutamine, uh, like this. So this polypeptide sequence of this amino acid, uh, we call this as a primary structure. So the primary structure is the sequence of a chain of amino acid. So that's a basic building block. And however, if you look at it more closely, they actually form not just a, it's a linear, but it's not like line. In real 3D space, they actually form some structure. You see something like this, very interesting structure, and this, and this. Of course, this is cartoon, um, but the, this is an insight to we understand how they actually look like. It's a regular substructure. So this we call as a secondary uh, structure. That is, sequence of amino acids are linked by hydrogen bond. You remember amino acid, the one side of the carbon atom is always hydrogen. So there's hydrogen, and this will form hydrogen bonding to give us this secondary structure. So people realize there's a, this helical structure called, named as it alpha helix. And the other is uh, this part, you know, this is called pleat, which is like in your, uh, some cloth or skirts, you see this pleats, and that we call beta pleated sheets, because it looks like sheets. In fact, this clarification of the structure led was discovered and clarified by Linus Pauling at Caltech and he got Nobel Prize in 1951 for he, and he named for this. And this secondary structure is a substructure and the whole full three-dimensional structure, it looked like this as an example, as a 3D structure, and we call this as a tertiary structure of protein. So that should be a three-dimensional arrangement of this two secondary structures with one single polypeptide chain. So this single polypeptides will have an N terminus and C terminus. And from start to the end, this is a, a single, single polypeptide chain. So we call it tertiary. And there could be even more complicated protein, which will have this tertiary as a subunit and multiple subunits put together to to make a one fully functional protein. So that we call as a quaternary structure because there are a very complex protein uh, molecules which will have multiple of these tertiary structures. All polypeptide within a complete protein with multiple subunits. A good example is a hemoglobin protein molecule which has like four subunits and this will, <clears throat> will carry hemoglobin, uh, oxygen in our body. So it's a red molecule, one of the most important function in our body, especially blood. So that protein structure and function, let's get into a little bit deeper. How the primary structure, as I alluded to show you, like how the peptide bond each other and then bonding, bonding, bonding makes a polypeptide chain. So each amino acid will be represented as one residue R1. And you can see R1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that will have one side eventually is an amine and the other side is carboxyl COO minus, you can see. And this carboxylic acid because it's C, we call it as a C terminus. And the other arm inside, you see this N, so we call it N terminus. So this polypeptide chain always has one side N terminus, the other side is C terminus. Interestingly, this sequence, when it's inside a solution or water, and it actually forms a three-dimensional structure that we call as a secondary structure. You can see this helical shape. You realize there's the oxygen here. The other side, there's the, uh, uh, the hydrogen. So you see this hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen is partially 
<clears throat> positive and oxygen partially negative. So there will be electrostatic interaction, uh, attraction. So they will form this a uh, weak, but many many this uh, bonding will form uh, will become very important to make this form alpha helix structure. So this we call as a hydrogen bonding form. And in other cases, you see this uh, <clears throat> N to C, this C to N terminus direction, and this C to N terminus direction, you can see one side change of hydrogen ends can interact with the other side of the oxygen. And this forms an hydrogen bonding and three-dimensional structure <clears throat> looks like pleated sheets. So that we call it as a pleated sheet. And this will form a substructure of protein. And that single, one single polypeptide chain, in fact, can create this three-dimensional structure as a one single amino acid chain. So that called tertiary structure. And multiple tertiary structures can form a full a protein, which is fully functional one. And in that case, we call it quaternary structure. So it's a home exercise. Why don't you take a look at this hemoglobin molecule and delve it into you know, its full functions. So we discuss about <clears throat> the basic principles of proteins, and uh, which is polymers of amino acids and how <clears throat> this diversity of about 20 natural amino acids influences its three-dimensional structure and its function. Next time, we'll discuss about nucleic acid. Thank you.